Well, hello everyone, my name is Wigo and welcome back to a new video. Today we're looking at one of the worst possible ROM hacks that I've ever played. And don't get me wrong, it's not because the game is necessarily bad, it's because they had so much potential, but they just wasted it all. I'm talking about Pokemon Darkrai Legend of Giratina. This game actually looked really amazing when I started looking at like the sprite work and the art style. And they also have a few Fakemon in there, but the ones that I found were just some Regis that had changed typing. They also have an entire new region called the Treon region. This game also has so many features like an honorary system where if you do good things, you'll be an angel. And if you do bad things, you'll be evil. There's also daily missions, and if you complete these, you get special points, and with those points, you can buy really cool items. To make the game a little bit more interesting, I'll be using Ash's team, so every Pokemon Ash has ever captured, I'll be allowed to use from his worst Pokemon ever to his best Pokemon ever. And we're going to try to, once again, make him champion. But first, we have to check out Pokemon Darkrai The Legend of Giratina. Let's jump right into it. We start off with a black and white screen and some Team Rockets are talking on the phone with their boss Giovanni. They're talking about a shadow plate that they have to put in place in order to summon the legendary Pokemon that can open distortion worlds and is basically in the title of this game. Giovanni then shows up, they open up the portal and jump right into it and just as they jump into it we wake up because apparently it was all just a dream. We go downstairs and our mom gives us our usual pep talk of that we should go to the professor to pick up our starter Pokemon and she also explains to us how to run. I'm glad she reminded me because I had no idea how to do that before this. We then go to Professor Rowan's lab, the local professor here, and he lets you choose between four typings of Pokemon, fire, water, grass, and electric. I could have gone electric here and just used Pikachu because, I mean, Ash and Pikachu are inseparable, but I decided to go with fire and I didn't go for Game Freak's favorite Pokemon, I went for Infernape. In my opinion, I mean, Infernape is always badass when it fights for Ash and I can definitely use a powerhouse like him on the team. We also get a very unique request from Professor Rowan that no other professor asks of you completing the Pokedex. He also told me that I have to meet up with my old friend Ace, who's already training up his new Pokemon on the first round. Since we're Ash Ketchum, we're not going to run away from a battle, and we head straight over there, but first get distracted by a well. I couldn't really find anything to fit the hole, so I thought by myself, well in that case, let's just go to our rival and battle him. He seems to be an alternate version of Barry from the Sinnoh region, and he also revives an old memory of us standing under this tree when we were little and told each other that once we had Pokemon, we would fight each other under this tree. So that's what we're doing right now, we beat up his Piplup with my Fire Monkey, but I also want to address something, there is a day and night cycle in this game. So sometimes the screen will be red, sometimes it will be a little bit darker, but if you fight inside, the screen will just be normal, I just wish they wouldn't have put this in the game because it kind of ruins everything. We then move further through the route and eventually reach Mount Hydronic. In here you have to complete puzzles where if you step on the wrong hole you fall down to the lower level and have to go all the way back up again. Or you can just be smart and use safe states like I did. I, I mean, I got it first try. I didn't even have to reset once. <clears throat> anyway, we eventually reach the top of this mountain and there seems to be a very dark reddish moon out and there's also a girl staring at it. And since we are a real ladies man, we're just going to go up and talk to her. Her name is apparently Elise and she's from the Sinnoh region and has already gained 8th gym badges there. She explains to us that she also had the same dream that we had, which means we must be connected somehow. She also explains more about the origin world in Giratina, but there is also a chosen trainer who is going to have to stop Giratina and I bet that you can't even guess who it is. We then also beat her up in a Pokemon battle after, but she just had a Growlithe and we have the superior fire type here. So once the battle's over, our Chimchar evolves into a Monferno. One more thing that I also have to say is that the trainers in this game also level up with you, which is pretty cool because you won't ever be too overleveled and the game stays a little bit challenging that way. 
She then leaves us alone and we can go to the nearest town and talk to an old man there. He says that we look tired and that he wants to invite us to his house to sleep. I do not trust this man at all, but we somehow still go through with it and sleep in his bed. Once we've fallen asleep, we enter another dream, and this time we're in the same cave as in the first dream, but we're free to explore. But somehow the distortion world opens up immediately and we get thrown into it. So we traverse our way through until we wake up and then we tell the old man what happened. Once we tell him everything that we know about this world, he transforms into a T-Rocket grunt. I knew I should not have trusted this old man. So he blasts a hole in the wall and goes to Giovanni to tell him everything. Pretty smart of him to use a Voltorb and not an actual bomb. Probably way cheaper to use as well. And they're reusable. So perhaps Team Rocket is even thinking about the environment. Maybe they're not so bad. But we're still going to have to stop them. First we go upstairs in this house though and we steal this Pokeball which gives us plus 10 in bad points. Nothing really bad happens to us though, we just get a free Grimer. We then go to the local Pokemart and he has a daily mission for us. Go and deliver a package to Professor Rowan in under 8 minutes. Because I was playing with like times 2 or times 3 speed, I went over this time limit, but I still got my reward, which were 10 Mumu Milks. We then get told that the first gym leader is currently located in Purity Forest, where he is investigating because apparently somebody is attacking Bug-type Pokemon. It's none other than Jesse, James and Meowth from Team Rocket. They're thinking that stealing this honey will make their boss really happy and give them a promotion, just like in the anime. I absolutely love this. Of course, we let them blast off again, as they still have the weakest Pokemon in the universe. Once we're done cleaning up the forest, the gym leader thanks us and backtracks to his gym again. So we meet up with him there, literally set the gym on fire with my flame-wheeling Monferno. And because she only had bug types, this was no problem whatsoever. I then got lost for about half an hour, but found a nearby cave where I had to do a mission. So I helped this explorer make a puzzle, which opened up a special hatch into some nearby ruins. These ruins are filled with unknown, but besides that, didn't really serve a purpose. I then ran into Team Rocket again and they were once again talking about the Shadow Plate and the Chosen One and that they're going to try and avoid me and just carry on their plan, which is not going to worry because we're beating every single one of them up right now in this cave. With a new Pokemon we caught, Pidgey, because everybody knows that Ash has a nice Pidgeotto and Pidgeot. At the end of the cave, we get to expose them, but they offer me a chance to work with them as a Team Rocket member. And since I love playing as the evil team, I decided to go along with it. They inform me of the mission that they're on right now, and apparently there's an ancient egg somewhere hidden in this cave. So they blow a hole in the wall so that we can enter it to try and find it. But in the background, Elise saw everything, and she's very worried that we're going to become evil, and that the story is not going to play out the same way since we joined Team Rocket. Now this is a pretty cool little mini game where you get to play as a Bagon and have to retrieve the egg in 20 seconds. After about 4 tries I managed to do it. We then deliver this egg to the Rocket Grunt upstairs and he tells us that we have a new mission, go to the Crystal Lair even deeper in the cave because there is a really cool Pokemon hiding there. Reggie Water and Jesse and James are once again making up a scenario in their head where they give it to the boss and he's going to be super happy with it once he's stranded in the desert and the Reggie can give him water. They First want to attack me, but then the Team Rocket grunts from upstairs, come down as well, and tell them that we're with Team Rocket ourselves now. They allow me to throw the egg in the water, which wakes up Reggie Water, and shoots off Jesse and James into space. Reggie Water then swims away, but apparently he always swims to a nearby cave where you have to summon Giratina. But since Team Rocket is pretty smart in this game, they put a tracker on Reggie Water so that they can follow his signal to this hidden cave. Once that's done, we get 20 Treon tokens from the Team Rocket Grunts, which I can then spend on some really weird items like frozen gears, frozen frames, uh, just a lot of frozen stuff that I have no idea what it's useful for. Once we're done checking out the shop, we go to the local area and find a girl sitting on a bench. She's sad because her grandma recently passed away and she wants to set a goodbye card by her grave but she's too scared to go to the graveyard so we accept this request and we will go and do it for her. But that's for later. First we try to enter the second gym but Ace comes out and he is going to want to battle again. 
He's now added a Ghastly and a Heracross to his team, but his Piplup has also evolved into Primplup. We don't really have any problems staking out the first two Pokemon Ghastly and Primplup with Pidgeotto by using Gust and Quick Attacks, but then Heracross takes me out with a Horn Attack, so Monferno has to come in, but since we're still super effective around here, we Flame Wheel that and win another rival battle. He then decides to not be a sore loser and gives me the HM for Cut, which we can only use if we defeat this next gym leader, Tavis, and he is a flying type user. Which is not too great for my Monferno, but my Pidgeotto should be able to handle most of them. Is what I thought before I went into the battle, because my Pidgeotto is level 21 and his Pokemon are level 30. Yeah, as it turns out, the level cap system here works with that the gym leader's Pokemon are always 5 levels higher than your highest leveled Pokemon. I wonder if you go to level 100, will the gym leader's Pokemon be level 105? But anyway, this did cause my Monferno to have to step in and take out the Pidgeotto and the Skarmory with Flame Wheels because they just did not use any flying type moves, they just hit me with like tackles and swifts. With that pretty underwhelming gym battle out of the way, we can now use Cut to chop up tiny little trees and the occasional sushi. Then it was time to capture two of Ash's iconic Pokemon, Taylor, which we will evolve into Swellow, and one of Ash's newest but coolest Pokemon, Gengar. But first we have to evolve it from Ghastly. We also get one step closer to our Gengar immediately by evolving Ghastly into Hauner, and we then talk to a random bird keeper who gives me the HM for Fly. If you didn't go into the houses and explore, you would never be able to get Fly, which is kinda bad. Nothing happens between the second and the third gym, so it's time to take on Emma, who's a Ghost-type gym leader. So we're going to have to fight Ghost against Ghost. Let's see if our Hounder can put in some work. He is proving his strength immediately by taking out her Hounder, which is 8 levels higher than me. With two Shadow Punches, but Shadow Punch on Haunter, it really isn't that great. Since the physical special split has been introduced, and Shadow Punch is of course physical. We get taken out the turn after by a Psy Beam from her next Pokemon, Ms. Drevis. So I then use my two bursts, Taylor and Pidgeotto, to bring down Ms. Drevis into red health. But of course she's going to heal up and take both of them out. So our ace in the hole has to come and clean up the mess. And we do what we do best, we flame wheel that Ms. Drevis out of here, her last Pokemon, but Ned doesn't stand a chance. And it even helps us by using a curse, which isn't going to do much. And that is three gym badges acquired. Sadly enough, there's nothing to report between this point and the next gym leader, so let's go and take on Cassie who has water types. And believe it or not, our fire type Monferno didn't actually sweep the gym this time. It was more of a combined effort of Swellow and Pidgeotto using wing attacks on her Staryu, Seedra and Gorbis. Eventually leaving me with only Pidgeotto left at about half health before I defeated her. So this is probably the hardest gym battle yet, despite her not having the greatest Pokemon. We then get a big power upgrade as we return to Monkey and get very big Pigeon. We then had a little bit of trouble with Ace Trainer Leroy, which I attempted to fight over 20 times before I emerged victorious. My team was just not very good at countering his and somehow I could not find any Pokemon Ash owned in the surrounding areas that I've already visited. And also this is what I mean with the game not being very good because once again nothing happens between the 4th and 5th gym except for a rival battle with Cassie this time in front of the gym itself. Like the game just feels very empty. It started off amazing, if they kept up the events regularly like one in between every single gym it would have been great. And maybe that's because I chose the evil option by helping Team Rocket, maybe if I didn't help them there would be more events. But I still feel like this should have been considered in development of the game itself so that it doesn't feel as empty as it is. Anyway enough ranting, let's get right into the fight with Elise. She has definitely buffed up her team quite a bit as she now has a Seedra, Manectric and Vibrava as well as her starter Pokemon Arcanine. Seedra goes down easily with a fly and a wing attack from Swellow, but then Manectric gives me a little bit of trouble by taking out my Swellow. Infernape was then able to take out the next two Pokemon with Flame Wheels and the Vibrava with Mag Punches, but Arcanine just was a little bit too strong, but I was still able to hit one Rock Slide to do decent damage on it. Haunter came in and did two Nightshades before going down to Bites as well, but then Pidgeot could finish it off with a quick attack. And once we've claimed victory against her, we get the HM for Surf, but we don't even have a Water-type Pokemon yet, so I guess that's our next objective. But first we enter the museum, which is also a gym, and Armando is owner of both of them. 
he has normal types and starts out with a Loudrit. You might have already seen a strong fighting type on our team already, so this should be no problem despite us only having Mac Punch. Because for some reason Monferno did not learn close combat at level 36, it learned Slash. You might have thought that Infernape was going to take care of this, easy peasy. Well, he does take care of Loudrid and Linoon with only some punches of the Mac, but his Vigoroth does overpower me with a slash. I then bring in Swellow, who is going to try and take it down with a fly and a wing attack, but it's left with like 5 HP and takes me down the same way as Infernape by slashing me up into little pieces. My big pigeon then tries to put in the work by taking down this Vigoroth with a bunch of wing attacks, like a bunch of them, but this gym leader used two hyper potions, healing him up fully, two times in a row. But at one point he just started using focus punch, which made me get a lot of free hits on him, and eventually the sloth was down. The last Pokemon was Slorlax, and you might have thought, well, you're dead now because you only have Hunter in the back and your Pidgeot has just died. Well, no, because this Snorlax cannot hit ghost types. I just used Confuse Ray and Curse, and the Snorlax took itself out. Five gym badges are mine, and now we can finally do some stuff. First I grab a fishing rod to grab my water type, and this one was Krabby. The seventh Pokemon Ash has ever caught. And the first Pokemon that was at Professor Oak's lab and pinched him quite a lot. We immediately evolve him into Kingler, and Hunter also evolves into Gengar. I then found the Pokeathlon Stadium from Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and was going to play some mini games, but it was empty. Except for one guy standing in there who gave me an item which I needed for a quest. I then delivered this item to the main character of the best Netflix show ever, The Witcher. As it turns out, this item was not enough to craft a different item, so I pick up other item, bring it to same person, and she makes me a charm so I can now enter the graveyard where Reggie Ghost is waiting on me. And I know that Ash has never used the Reggie Ghost, but I decided to capture it anyway just for fun. Once we're done with that, we also delivered a little girl's letter to her grandma to her grave, which ends that quest line. So we tell the little girl what happened, and as a reward for completing it, we get a freaking Master Ball. How did a little girl even get her hands on this? It just doesn't make any sense. We then know that Team Rocket is once again up to no good, as they've infiltrated the cave to try and summon Giratina. They seem to have forgotten that we actually want to work with them, and they attack me. So we defeat Jesse and James rather easily, and that was that. They blast off, we go further into the cave and see that our two rivals are already taking on Team Rocket. We head on over to Giovanni who's standing in front of the Distortion World portal. I really wanted to work with Team Rocket on this one, but they don't seem to want my help in any shape or form. And they just think that we're going to try and stop them, so they flee into the portal. Since we can't work together with Team Rocket, I guess we're going to have to work against them, so me and my two rivals jump into the Torn World and we traverse our way through it pretty easily. At the end, we see Giratina standing behind Giovanni as he's trying to capture him. We can't let this happen, so we charge in with our Fire Monkey, and we go for two Blaze Kicks and a Flame Wheel on this first Pokemon Nidoking, also burning him in the process to take him down very easily without taking too much damage. Kangaskhan then comes out, but this thing just uses Reversal and Endure, so four Mac Punches takes out the parent Pokemon. Rhydon then hits a horn drill, one hit KOing my Infernape. But don't worry, we now have a water type, Kingler, who is 12 levels lower than Rhydon but can still take it out with a single surf. His last Pokemon is a Luxray, so my Kingler goes for the Mudshot after getting hit with a Swagger, which does more than half of its HP, but the turn after we get taken out by a Crunch. This allows me to bring in Gengar and go for the Nightshade. This doesn't kill sadly enough, so we get swaggered, we hit ourselves in a confusion, and a crunch is once again enough to take me out. Swallow can then come in because this Luxray basically has no HP left. We can go for one more quick attack and finish off Giovanni with a very, very underleveled team. Once that's done, Giovanni flees the scene and we then get congratulated by our rivals as well. And I say that we have to go and challenge the Poké Champion League. This just doesn't make any sense. Anyway, we beat up Giratina because Ash, sadly enough, never owned one. Once we save the world from Doom, we then go and take on the 6th gym leader, a Gala, who has Psychic-type Pokémon. Luckily for us, we have a Gengar. And an Infernape, despite being weak to Psychic, he is still able to take down the first two Pokémon, Jinx and Alakazam, with Blaze Kicks. Gardevoir is then just a little bit too strong, and as it hits me with a Psychic, my Fire Monkey finally falls. 
Gengar can then sweep up Gardevoir with Shadow Ball and the next Pokemon, Zatu, as well. But Espeon doesn't go down by a single Shadow Ball and counters back with a Side Beam taking me out. Luckily, we still have three more Pokemon in the back, so Pidgeot can Wing Attack one more time and Gala is defeated. We enter another dull moment because nothing happens between this and the next gym, except for one more rival battle in front of the gym with Ace. First it's Bat versus Pigeon, and my Pigeon easily takes it out with some wing attacks. He then has another bird, but this time it's a penguin, and he overpowers me. But crabs are known to eat penguins for breakfast, so we just mud shot him a couple of times with Kingler, and that's Empoleon down. Rapidash also gets taken out by two much shots and Gengar gets swept away by some tidal waves. But a Destiny Bond takes me down with him. Luckily his last Pokemon is Heracross. Our swell is four times super effective against that, so one fly and we can enter the gym battle. Before we actually challenge the gym, I capture one Tauros, not 50 like Ash did in the anime, which finally gives us six team members. I just couldn't find any Pokemon that Ash owned before this. With our Raging Bull, we head on over to Marcus, the technically final gym leader, but we forgot to do one gym because he can take on the gym leaders in any order you'd like. Anyway, he does have Dragon Pokemon, and we can see that he has a very dangerous Salamance. But sadly enough, he starts off with a non-Dragon Pokemon, Seedra. We use two Trashes on it to take it out, but we also get hit with a Hydro Pump and get poisoned by its Poison Point ability, which means that Dragonair is easily going to be able to take us out in turn after, after we hit another Trash. We bring in Gengar and take down this boy with a couple of Shadow Balls, as well as the next Pokemon, Altaria. Then his Ace Salamance comes out, so I set up a curse so that it will eventually just go down by itself. And with a little bit of help of Kingler's Stomp, we can easily then overpower him. His last Pokemon on the team is an Aerodactyl, so I guess he is kind of a fan of Lance, but our Kingler can also deal with that by using Surf two times in a row. We then backtrack a couple of times to face our final gym leader, Kendrick Lamar. He specializes in Grass-type Pokemon, and we have two Flying-types and a Fire-type, so this should be no problem whatsoever. And just as I predicted, the easiest gym battle up until now, we easily take out Nuzleaf, Torterra, and Breloom with Pidgeot's Wing Attacks, then we swap out into Infernape, and Blaze Kick the final two Pokemon, Leafeon and Victory Bell, gaining our last gym badge and giving us access to the Pokemon League. But first I found a guy that literally sells every TM in the game, so I pick up some very useful ones to help me in the fight against the Elite Four and Champion, and just as we're about to barge into Victory Road, we get stopped by Elise. She was no match for me at all. She only added a Glaceon to her team. The rest of her team went down by the combined efforts of my Kingler, Swellow, and Pidgeot. With Gengar also coming in and giving him the occasional Sludge Bomb and Nightshade here and there. Once we defeated her, we surfed across the seas and found this little Magikarp. Which was pretty cute, but there were more important things at hand. We found two more Pokemon that Ash had owned actually, Heracross and Famphy. Since Heracross is my favorite bug type, I was super happy to find this, and we also evolved our Fanfi into a Dawn Fam shortly after. And just as we have completed the hardest path in the entire game, we then have to face Ace once again just before we enter the Pokemon League. He luckily heals up our Pokemon, so we don't have to worry about that too much. And I just wanted to say that I clicked Rollout with Donphan and took out his Empoleon, Crobat, and Rapidash that way. We did sustain quite a lot of damage before taking out these three Pokemon, so Snorlax's Hyper Beam could finally finish me off. Still don't really understand how he shoots it out of his eyes. Anyway, the rest of his team was no problem as we bring out Infernape, set up a bulk up, take out Snorlax with Brick Break, Gengar with a couple of rock slides and Heracross with Blaze Kick. He then runs off and then we see a stadium that I'm pretty sure comes straight out of a Yu-Gi-Oh game. As there is the Millennium Ion there, so I guess this was just stolen. Still a pretty cool stadium though, so let's jump right into it, let's challenge the Elite Four, and you can actually choose which one you battle first in this game. I decided to take on Cody first, as he's an Ice-type trainer, and we have Heracross and Infernape on the team, which should be more than enough to sweep through his team. I was definitely right, as we just set up two bulk ups with Heracross, and literally one-shot every single one of his Pokémon. On to the second Elite Four member fight. The next one is a Fighting-type Elite Four member. This already seems a lot like the Kanto League. She does, however, have a way better team than Bruno, so we aren't going to have that easy of a time. 
is what I would have said if we didn't have a Gengar on the team because not a single Pokemon on our team was able to hit him somehow. I just psychic everything and eventually took out our last Pokemon Hariyama with some Sludge Bombs and Shadow Balls. The third one we have to take on is Megan and she actually has a type that's not used in the Kanto League, namely the Electric type. She starts off with a Lantern. Luckily we brought Dawn Fan with us because he can take out 5 over 6 Pokemon. Lantern, Ampharos, Magnezone, Luxray. The problem was that this Luxray did hit a double edge, leaving me with only 11 HP going into the final Pokemon Jolteon, who then outsped me and pin missiled once. And that's the end of Dawn Fan's Carnage. We then bring in Heracross and we get Paralyzed, which is actually really good because we have the Guts ability, which means that our Megahorn is now going to one-shot. We're also going to keep this Paralysis on my Heracross so I can do even more damage in the next two battles. But first, we have to see what Oscar, the final Elite Four member, is up to. He has ground types, which isn't too great for us, but we should be able to eventually win if we use Kingler to our advantage. Which doesn't really happen, but we can take out Quaxar with a couple of stomps, then he brings in Torterra. I did teach him Ice Beam for this specific moment, but Ice Beam was not good enough because it's a special move and Kingler sucks in its special attack, so Torterra was able to overpower him and my Swellow too, so I brought in Infernape, Blaze kicked it, and that's the end of Torterra. I then tried to take out his camera up with Gengar's Shadow Balls, but his eruptions were just a little bit too strong, causing me to swap out into Donphan and finishing it off with Earthquake. Claydol took care of itself by using Explosion, which was pretty easy, and then Steelix was up next. And all I needed was two Earthquakes to take it out, but we only survived with 3 HP after a crunch, which means Flygon is able to finish me off, so I bring in Heracross, Megahorn, and that is that. Four Elite Four members defeated, let's see who the champion is. And it's someone we've never seen before, his name is Mitchell. Not a too intimidating name for a champion, if I can say so myself. That doesn't mean he's going to be easy to take down, let's check out what kind of Pokemon he has. He leads off with a Skarmory, which is easily countered by my Infernape's Blaze Kicks. Empoleon then comes out and I'm hoping I can take it out with a Brick Break, but it just isn't enough and a Hydro Pump swamps me away. Luckily for us, we have another Fighting type, so we bring in Heracross to take down this Empoleon and the next Pokemon, Absol, as well. Gardevoir could have taken me out with a Psychic probably, but it went for Imprison, so my Megahorn one-shots it again. He then brought out Ninetales and this thing had a really bad moveset as it only used Quick Attack as an attacking move so I brought in Kingler to take it out with some Mud Shots and his final party Pokemon is a Gengar again. I tried to make it a fair matchup so I brought in my own Gengar but because I had to do that I took some damage from Shadow Ball and I could then hit a Psychic but it just wasn't enough and we got taken out by another Shadow Ball. He then used the full restore as I bring in Swellow, but this doesn't really matter because a couple of aerial aces later and we have become champion of the Treon region. We go to the Hall of Fame, see that we become a book catcher all of a sudden, and, and just one minute under a day of in-game time to complete this entire game. I'm going to give this ROM hack a 4 out of 10. I absolutely love the graphics, but I hate the day and night system. I hate that it feels so empty. But I played through the entirety of it, and I just wanted to show you some of the bad games that I play. Because sometimes I play through an entire game, and I'm like, this was not good. And then I have to throw away that entire footage, and... I have wasted my entire day. I tried to make the video as entertaining as possible, so I hope you still enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below what game you would like me to try next, or if there's any challenges you would like me to do. And with all of that out of the way, I would like to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It is always appreciated, but not needed. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.